Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to get user input using form and end form. So I have Prat open here and I have a sound file and a text grid file and when we view those we can see this. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth. Okay, so it's a file with five sentences and we're going to get user input about which sentence we want to change, uh, changing pitch or changing uh, certain other things. And so we need to get user input in a script. So let's open up a new Pratt script. And in, a new, in the new Pratt script, we can type in form and we can also type in end form. And between these two, between these two commands, we can type um, what we want uh, to get from the user, what kind of input. But first of all, um, we have to name the form. If we don't name it, uh, Pratt will complain. So uh, let's name it anything. Um, get pitch info information from user. Okay. So that's the name of our form, and uh, we can immediately write a comment. And we can write a comment like, uh, which sentence do you want to change? Okay. And if I now uh, run this, nothing happens because there's no value, no variable in here. So what I have to do is I have to create some variable that we need to get from the user. Right now we just have a, a sentence in our form. So let's uh, use a positive val value. Okay, uh, actually let's use a natural number. There are, there are different uh, things that you can use. Real numbers, positive numbers, integers, natural numbers. You can get words from the user, sentences, text, boolean choices. Uh, there are many different things and you can look those up in the Pratt help menu. But what I'm going to do is just uh, choose a natural number. So that's a positive whole number. So if I type in natural, and then the name of the variable, well, this is the sentence for the pitch to change. So I'm going to call it pitch sentence. And then I'm going to give it an initial value. Let's say, well, it doesn't matter, but I've got five sentences in my uh, sound file over here. So uh, let me choose the second sentence. OK, now if I run this, this box here pops up and you can see that the title of the box is get pitch information from user. You can see the comment here, which sentence do you want to change? And you can see pitch sentence, this is the name of the variable, and two is the initial value of that. If I click OK, nothing happens because there's no other commands in the script. OK, now if I want to double check and make sure that this variable is actually has actually been assigned then I can use the write info line command to write a line into the info window and let's just uh, use our variable name like that and so this should write the value to or whatever the value is that the user types in should write that to the info window. So let's try running again. Okay, the box pops up and two is specified. The user can change it to three or four or five or one, or anything. Let me leave it as two and click OK. Now you see in the info window, write info line pitch sentence. So the value two appears here. If I run it again and I choose a different value as the user, I choose the value 4, pitch sentence 4, then, yeah, okay, pitch sentence is a variable that is being assigned the number that the, the whole number, or natural number, positive whole number, that the user has typed in. 
Okay, now if I want, uh, let's say I want to change the, uh, I want the user to specify how many hertz, how high to raise the pitch. Well, then I can put in another value for the user to type in. So uh, let's see, in this case, maybe a positive, uh, positive real number. So this is positive. And then let's call this, um, so raise pitch. And let's uh, choose any, well, doesn't matter, but the default value here, let's choose as 200 hertz. Okay. Um, I can also, before that, write another comment, just uh, instructions for the user. So how many, how many hertz? Do you want to raise the pitch? Okay, so now uh, let me append info line here to make sure that our variable is actually being assigned properly. So raise pitch. Okay, so now this should ask the user which sentence assign the variable, the value that the user types in. It should ask the user how many hertz and assign the variable raise pitch to that number. And then it should display both of those values in the window, in the info window. So let me run this. Okay, now you can see I have two lines here. One is pitch sentence, the other is raise pitch. And uh, let me just use the default values here. And there we go. Both of the variables, pitch sentence and raise pitch, have the respective values of 2 and 200. So everything's okay so far. Now notice that, uh, as you know, variables in Pratt must begin with a small letter, lowercase letter. Um, however, in the, in the script, uh, in the form, end form, in the form, in a script, you can use a capital letter in the form, and Pratt knows that this must be a variable um, after the word natural. It's got to be a variable name coming next, and so it knows that this is pitch sentence, the variable pitch sentence with a small p. So if we run this with a big P, and we, well, we change this to a big R, big P, and we run it, it's still going to work. Notice that it comes up here in the form with large P and small, uh, sorry, large R. If we run it, it still prints out these variables, okay? However, if I were to change this to big P and big R, now we have a problem because variables cannot begin with a capital letter. So if I were to run this, we would get uh, the prep. Um, the script crashing and yes it does it crashes and it tells me variables start with lower case okay okay so let me change this back to p and r lower case so now we're fine okay um, i can also uh, if i want to specify to the user that this value must be a value in hertz I can put something like this in where I have brackets and Pratt will ignore the brackets when it assigns the value to the variable. The variable name is not this whole name with the, with the brackets and hertz. The variable name stays the same as uh, stays, stays the same so it's raised pitch still. Um, but this is a way that you can put this into the script. So uh, I can say Instead, I can say how, how many how many hertz. Instead of that, I can say how much. How much do you want to raise the pitch? Raise pitch bracket hertz. Okay, and if I run this, uh, we should be okay. Yeah, so here you see raise pitch, and then you see brackets hertz. And if I click OK, I'm still getting the values to come out properly. So uh, the variable name is raise pitch, not raise pitch hertz. The variable name is just raise pitch. Okay. Okay. So 
that's what I can do. I can uh, use other things as well, um, like integer values, like real numbers, uh, and so on that I mentioned before. Now, um, let me. Now, how can we use this in in a script to actually change the pitch of the second sentence? Well, I have uh, a form that I've already made, so let me open that. Okay, <clears throat> this one. Oops, that didn't open in Prat for some reason. Open with. Uh, yeah. oh, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna add an extension, Pratt extension here. And now if I open this, yes, it opens in Pratt. Okay. So here is my here is my uh, script that I've made. Here's the form and end form. So it's getting user input about the pitch change which sentence to raise pitch, how much to raise the pitch. And here's where it actually uh, raises the pitch and uses a manipulation object to change the pitch. Okay, So um, what we have to do is we have to, after the user says which sentence to raise the pitch, then we have to use that variable, pitch sentence variable, to get the start time of that interval in our text grid. So remember that if the user has chosen the second sentence to raise the pitch, then we need to know the start time and end time of the second sentence in order to uh, raise the pitch properly. Okay, So start p equals get the start time of interval first tier and two times the pitch sentence. Why two times? Well, because um, my I, I've got spaces between a space blank intervals between my sentences. So the first sentence is actually interval two. The second sen sentence is actually interval four, interval six, interval eight, interval ten. So that's why I'm multiplying by two here. So. Um, Let's let's run this and see what happens. What what this is going to do is it's going to create a manipulation object. It's going to um, extract the pitch tier. It's going to shift the frequencies by the amount called raise pitch. This variable up here. It's going to use that in shift frequencies in this command, and it's going to shift the frequencies from the start of the pitch sentence to the end of the pitch sentence. Okay, And after, um, after replacing the pitch tier in the manipulation object, it's going to then uh, resynthesize the sound and um, uh, we have our new our solution. So let's try let's try this. Okay, so here we go. We're running the script. Our form pops up. Which sentence to raise pitch? Pitch sentence two. Okay. How much to raise the pitch? Raise pitch, two hundred hertz. Okay. Let's click OK. So it goes through its calculations, and our solution is right here. If I open that one. Oops. Okay. You'll notice that the pitch is very high. Oops. Uh, higher than my display here. So let me change the display to uh, 360. So now you can see uh, pitch is raised much higher, 200 hertz higher for this sentence. If I play it, it sounds like this. This is the first. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. Okay, so I've got my second sentence very high now. Um, if I uh, get rid of these objects, and if I try again, but uh, input something different, uh, let me input uh, pitch sen sentence four, and let me raise it by 150 hertz. Click OK, and view and edit the result. You can see that sentence four is raised up higher now. So now let me play this. This is the first. This is the second. This is the third. 
this is the fourth. This is the fifth. Okay. So the fourth sentence has now been raised, and in this case, by 150 hertz, what I input. Okay, now instead of me having to click and uh, play each time, I can actually add that in, uh, whether, whether I, I can ask the user whether he or she wants to play the result or not. And I can do that by uh, adding in a Boolean, uh, a Boolean uh, a, a, a line to the form, end form. So Boolean and then uh, if I call it, uh, for example, play, play, and then a boolean is either zero or one. Uh, zero means off, and one means on. So by default, I'll I'll have play checked. Okay, and then down at the bottom of my script, after we get the solution, I can use a, a an if statement. Then so if if play, that's my variable, if play equals one, then play, okay, and that's it. If it's zero, it won't play. If it's one, it'll play, okay? So that's it, and now if I, uh, let me clear these other objects here. Okay, I've got my, just my original here right now. And now if I run this, and sure, we'll use sentence 2 and 200 hertz. Now you can see uh, right here, there is play. I can uncheck that if I want, or I can check it. It's 1, so it's checked by default. If I click OK, this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth. So it plays the file uh, because I've got that checked. Okay, so that's it for the uh, form end form. You can do much more with the form and, and uh, get text, uh, string variables, uh, and so on, but I won't go into that in this video now.